Money and the Law of Attraction, the top 10 ideas from Abraham Hicks' second book in the Law of Attraction sequel series. The first one was asked and it's given and this is Money and the Law of Attraction to help you understand what money is and how to attract more of it into your life. This is Jake with jakeducey.com and I'm going to be talking about the top ideas from Money and the Law of Attraction so that you can apply them to your life even if you don't have time to read the whole book. So let's dive right into it. Number one, the first thing to understand is that money is actually two things. Huh? Like there's a head and then there's a tails? No, money is actually two things and let me explain that. I didn't know what the heck that meant. And in the early stages of my career, I never had any money. Maybe you can relate to that or you know somebody who's like that. They never have much money. There's no money left over to save. There's no money left over to do the things that you want to do. There's no money. And I wanted to earn more money, but I was spending all my time thinking about the fact that I needed to earn more money because I didn't have any money. I need to earn money because I don't have any money, but when you're in the place of needing to have money because you don't have any money and that's all you're telling yourself, I don't have any money, therefore I need it, it seems logical and rational, but actually the energy of that is I don't have any money. So what does the law of attraction do? Abraham says in the book Money and in, in the Law of Attraction is that it responds to your vibration around money. Your focus is the lack of it. So money is really actually two things the presence of money or the lack of money in your life. And so often we think we're attracting abundance and prosperity into our lives, but we're focused on lack and poverty and limitation. And it seems like a logical thing to do, but Albert Einstein said it best when he said that logic will get you from A to B, but imagination will take you, drumroll, 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 where will imagination take you? Anywhere. So. Where would you like to go in your financial life? And everything started changing for me when I stopped affirming what was. What was was I didn't have any money. And when you start to look at money as two things and you start to get aware of your energy around money, okay, I'm focused on not having it. Right? Because you look at your bank account and you might go, "Well, I don't have enough money. I don't I need to make more money." Okay. Money come to me, money come to me, and you put it on your vision board and you make it your goal. I'm gonna earn a hundred more dollars this week. I'm gonna earn another $10,000 this month or whatever it is. But you're in the energy of not having it. So you can only attract that because every thought has a chemical reaction in the brain that controls the energy we're in. The energy we're in is otherwise known as our emotion, your energy in motion, emotion, or your vibration. The law of attraction responds to the vibration you're in. So when you're looking out in the world saying, I need more of this thing, you're coming from the place of not having it, so you attract that. So my invitation to you is to start to focus on the presence of it in your life. Everything started changing when I started affirming this. I am so happy and grateful that large sums of money come to me easily and quickly. I'm so happy and grateful that money comes to me in increasing quantities through many sources on a continuous basis. I am so happy and grateful that large sums of money come to me under the highest good of all concern for the difference that I make in the world. When I started focusing on those things as opposed to, man, I wish I had more money. I hope I can have more money. Uh, it's frustrating because I don't have enough money. My goal is to make more money. I mean, I, I hope that I get there. I wish it would happen already. I mean, two totally different energies. So notice whether you're focused on money or the lack of money because money is actually two things, the presence of it or the absence of it. And your perception is what determines what you notice. And remember this final word. Lack of evidence is an evidence of lack. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. So start talking about the presence of it in your life. Number two, when you openly or privately condemn the success that you crave, you cannot attract it into your life. 
And Money in the Law of Attraction, the book breaks it down so well because think about again and everything in this reality in terms of energy and vibration. Money is energy, your body is energy. What is all this energy stuff anyways? Well, if you look under a powerful enough microscope, what do you see? You see that this wall, you see that these lights that I'm shooting with, you see that the computer or the phone you're on or your body, it's all energy, it's all mass of molecules moving at a very high speed of vibration. It's all different vibrational frequencies. And if you think about the fact that when you really want an ideal romantic relationship or you really want a better car, heck, you don't even care if you get a sports car, you just want a car that freaking works for once, right? Like, or you want your dream house or you see somebody with health, you want something and you see somebody else with it. And our natural inclination is when we don't have that thing is to protect ourselves from not having it because we don't want to face the failure the fear of failure or just the feeling of man i don't have that thing but i wish i had it so the result is that we project it onto somebody else who does have it rich asshole i mean look at that hundred thousand dollar car i mean what does he does he ever do anything nice in the world or like you see somebody that has like they say like a fit jerk when somebody's really fit we call them fit jerks you know or we get jealous of maybe you're a woman and you get jealous of, a, of a, another woman who has a beautiful body or you're a man and you get jealous of somebody who has a beautiful woman or they have a well-paying job or maybe we get jealous of somebody with their dream house when we do that we negate the success that could actually come to us because what we're saying vibrationally and subconsciously is subconscious mind that thing over there is bad and I don't want it the subconscious mind doesn't know that secretly you really wish you had it, but you're sad that you don't have it. So then you're saying that that thing's bad or that person's jealous as a way to cope with you not having it. It doesn't get all of that. It just immediately stunts your vibration and puts you in a place of lack. So make a conscious intention. The exercise is to make a conscious intention when you're going out in the day today or tomorrow, whatever time of the day it is that you're watching this, that you look for somebody who has things of prosperity. Maybe if you even don't want those specific things, like I don't want, like I'm not, I personally am not like a sports car kind of guy. Like I just, I just drive a Prius and that's cool with me, right? So, but if I see somebody in like a Bentley or something, you know, I don't, my thought is, man, good for you. Good for you to go show the people in the world that they can create prosperity. Like, I hope you get another Bentley. I'm trying to say that out loud or in my mind. I'm trying to celebrate their prosperity, right? But I might have seen somebody, now I live in my dream house. I was not in my dream house before, but every time I'd go into my, my friend's dream houses, I'd be like, man, I am so stoked for you. I'm so, right? So go out and think of the thing where you see people with prosperity or money, right? This is about the book money and the law of attraction so we'll speak more specifically around prosperity look for people who have symbols of prosperity notice if you want to judge them and instead can I reframe it to celebrate their success what does that do it says subconscious I want this thing universe I want this thing I really enjoy this thing this thing is coming into my life so then the law of attraction responds to that and it creates money or prosperity in your life so that's the exercise that you can try number three if this time space reality had the ability to come conjure up a desire in you, then it has the ability to realize it. Think about it. The seed doesn't exist without the ability to turn into a tree. The oak tree seed doesn't exist without the ability to turn into an oak tree. The seed of desire that you have within yourself for a, your dream house, for your soulmate, for more money, specifically along the lines of the book, Money and the Law of Attraction, Abraham tells us, if you have the ability to imagine it, then you have the ability to realize it because the basis of our entire universe is abundance anyways. Think about it. The only places there's really not abundance is things that humans have created out of, out of our egos and out of our minds. The, the universe in and of itself is totally abundant. Look at how much, there's so much. I'm, I can see the ocean from my office right now. There is so much water. There's so much rain. I live in Hawaii, there's so much water. You just put seeds in the ground, things grow. It's like the earth is so abundant. The universe is so abundant. And we're a part of the universe. Money is just a form of energy and the universe just is a bunch of different frequencies of energy. Money is a part of that. Your dream house is a part of that. The prosperity and abundance things you want are a part of that energy. And so if you have the ability to conjure up a desire, then the universe can fulfill that desire. 
then within you, you have the innate capabilities and the worthiness of that being achieved or you wouldn't have it in the first place because the purpose of life isn't to punish us. It's not to kill us. The purpose of life is to help us grow, learn to love, to when we have limitations to learn how to transcend them. So any financial limitations that you might feel that you face on the cusp of your dream or your vision, whatever it is that you're desiring to manifest um, in terms of money or prosperity like Abraham talked about in the book, you have the ability to realize those very things. But it's like almost counterintuitive because the mind is like, ah, I don't know if I could actually do it and I don't know if it's this. If you wouldn't have the thought, if you couldn't, there's more money printed every single day. There's like the dream houses are out there. And when you grasp that, you have within you the ability to realize these things. It's like life gets exciting because it's like, what do I want? Not what am I going to settle for? What's eh, it's okay. But what do I want? What do you want? So if you didn't settle ever again, what would you want? knowing that the universe can actually realize that because you wouldn't have the desire in the first place if it wasn't if it didn't have the ability to realize it so what is that for you number 4 when you're in fear of money money can't find you when you're in fear of money it can't find you so do a practice look around and think about all the things money has done i could think of a million Money has gotten me the shirt that I'm wearing right now, the dresser behind me, the lights for me to make these videos, the computers. Even when I thought there wasn't money, there actually was money behind it. Money paid for this house, the palm trees. Money got those palm trees. They're not, they weren't just like the earth didn't create them. Somebody went and either planted them or went to a nursery and got them or they used the seeds. Money's done a lot of awesome things and it's out there. And if you have trouble with that idea, download my free success hypnosis, jakeshypnosis.com down below. Um, Because it's all subconscious programming and that's what we learn in the book, uh, in, in Abraham's book, is that it's all subconscious programming. But when we understand that we're one with the source of all riches, with the source of all things, and subconsciously use the use the, the the hypnosis. I've been using it for years. When you subconsciously grasp that, your perception of your reality shifts because all of a sudden now you recognize that you're actually in a harmonious relationship with abundance. There's no reason for lack. There's no reason we can change all of those old ideas about the ways that we thought were limited. So remember this. When you're in fear of money, it can't find you because it has ears. And when you call it in a place of abundance, when you call for it in a place of abundance and gratitude and humility and service, it comes. So download my success hypnosis down below. Number five, since so much of your life revolves around money, it makes sense to just commit to mastering it. That's one of the biggest ideas from this whole book. If if it's going to be one of the central parts of your life, you need it for clean water, you need it for food, you need it for the home that you live in, the books you have, the clothes you wear, the places you send your kids to school, the car you drive, hopefully it's a safe one, insurance, all of these things, a computer, phone, you wouldn't be watching this without money. It's such an integral part of our life. You can argue and you can say, well, why is it like this? I don't like this. This sucks. But... There's really no sense in wishing the wind would stop blowing. Like I make videos, right? Sometimes the wind's really strong here in Hawaii. I could argue with the wind or I could just close the windows. We can accept what is and make full advantage of this physical experience that we're here. Or we could argue with it. It's up to you. I prefer, I for one. And like, okay. Money is a part of our experience and all money really is is energy and it's a medium of exchange for me to provide service to the world. It's not going to give me happiness, but it will give me options and allow me to provide options for other people in the world. And it's a medium of fair exchange, one energy exchange for another energy of exchange. And I grasp that. And so I'm deciding that I am going to master it. I'm going to provide amazing, passionate service in everything that I do. And I'm going to give myself in a position to live an inspired life, to pay for healthy, expensive foods, to get green powders and green juices and salads and have my energy in an optimal place so that I can be the happiest, healthiest version of myself 
and you can decide that you don't need money, but unless you're living on rent-free land in the middle of somewhere and every single piece of food that you have is totally provided for, and there are people that do that, then you're probably gonna need it. So what I invite you to do is make the decision and accept that money is a part of our experience and I love money because of the options it provides, the service that I can provide for the world, the experience that I can gather for myself and for other people, whether they're strangers or loved ones. Man, it can do so many things. It can provide options to better your life, better your friend's life, your family's life, and the world depending on how you use it. And so let's make a decision that us with these big hearts are going to have a positive relationship with money so that we can live our optimal lives and that we can have the optimal amount of difference that we actually can make in the world. Because think about it, if you got big dreams, you wanna build a nonprofit, you wanna be an author, you wanna make awesome music, you wanna help the school systems. Man, you want, you've got a new invention, a cool idea. It's really hard to do with that without money. So make the decision, make it with me, that you're gonna commit to mastering money, to attracting it into your life, graciously receiving it, and willingly giving it graciously, and it'll make all the difference in the world. Number six, practice noticing the money story that you tell right now. So this is a big thing, right? Is that we have a story around money that we tell. That story around money might be positive, it might be negative. Mine used to be something like this. Money, I hate you. But I wish you would be here, but it's the government's fault. And they're printing too much of it. And I mean, if I was a little bit older, if things were a little bit cheaper, man, I really need you, but I don't, I don't want you. I mean, I can live without you, but where are you? That was my money story. And imagine telling that to a romantic person, like your partner. I don't want you. No, wait, why are you leaving me? Come back here. Uh. They would leave. Money has ears and it'll hear you when you call it. When you call it for the positive, or you call it for the negative, it's gonna hear you. So what's your money story been? I've decided to change my money story to one of positivity, of opulence, of service, of contribution, of abundance, that I willingly give and I graciously receive and that large amounts of money come to me uh, for the highest good of all concerned under the grace of God. For the highest good of all concerned and, and that I'm going to uh, give my talents with love and I'll be wonderfully blessed for that. And so what's your money story? Like, what did your parents talk about money? Do you think it's the news fault, the government's fault, you're, you didn't have good enough GPA or good enough SATs or it's your boss, you don't have the resources? Man, there's so many awesome stories of people who've, who've created abundance out of nothing. And not only did they create it for themselves, but they created it for the societies, they created it to fund new endeavors that are moving society forward. There's so much cool stuff, but first, what's your money story? Seven, practice offering the vibration of what you want before you have it. So let's say that you wanted to, you're making $10,000 a year and you wanted to make 40. How would you feel? What would you be doing? If you made an extra 30 grand, what would your energy be like? What would you be doing? Practice getting in the feeling of it before you actually even have it. So what happens is we get in this place where we're waiting to have something before we can become a different person. That might start with actually looking at what you're spending. It might be setting your first financial goal ever. It might be writing affirmations every day or listening to my free success hypnosis. Listen to my success hypnosis to reprogram your subconscious mind. Take measurable steps in the place of abundance around money instead of saying, I'll do it once I have more money. No, no, no. First, we have to start making amends with our poor relationship around money so that it comes into our life. Is it studying money books? Just make a positive movement forward. Albert Einstein said that, uh, that nothing changes until something moves. You gotta move first before your financial life can change. Up next, notice 
your intentions around money. So I'm gonna read you a couple awesome points out of the Abraham Hicks Money and the Law of Attraction book. So which one is you? I'm intending to attract more money versus I don't know how to get any more money or I intend to discover how to create more money in my life. I intend to discover how to create more money in my life versus I've always been poor and the government wants it that way or the people always say the Illuminati wants it that way. Which one? I recognize the value for money for the area in which it's used versus money doesn't make you happy and I don't need it, but I wish I had it. <laughs> Next one. I'm appreciative for the role money plays in my life and I welcome its abundance versus the world would be a whole lot better if we didn't have any money. Notice which one is you and notice how that starts back to the first point, which is money is really two things, the presence of it or the absence of it in your life. Notice one of those statements was always the presence of it or being in the energy of abundance. The other one was a total lack, even if it seemed logical. Next, stop stating the factual truth. So the question is, does your thinking control your bank account or does your bank account control your thinking? Does your thinking control your bank account or does your bank account control your thinking? Most people, our, our natural inclination is to state the factual obvious reality of the situation. But that's not how we bent pieces of metal and flew it over the ocean. That's not how we created electricity. That's not how we created the internet. That's not how we created the computers we use. All of that stuff was actually created by disregarding the present reality. By passionately believing in what does not yet exist, that's when we can create it. But not until then. So when, when most people look out to the world around them, they see the world as it is. So they look at their bank account and they say, well, I have $48 in it. Well, I have $1,000 in it. That's how much money I have. And they allow their physical senses to define what goes into their consciousness. And so people say, nothing's changing around my money, around my, around my abundance. Really, it's changing all the time. Everything is energy. Energy is always moving at a very high speed of vibration. So it appears to be solid objects who are physicalized, but it's always moving. So how could everything be the same and nothing's changing? It's actually changing all the time. It's just being created in a way where you're looking to your bank account, you're looking to your bills, you're looking to all these things and affirming your past reality and your consciousness and your consciousness, which is projection that projects your reality is projecting the same past financial situation again. So that's why we need to start changing our story. And remember this, to think what you want to think is to think truth regardless of appearance. That's Wallace Waddles. To think what you want to think regardless of truth. Regardless of the appearance. That's going to be your truth. So what is your truth versus the reality? Number 10, last but not least, undesirable results are merely your toll belt to tell you whether you're on course or off course. That's all they are. So if you have the results that you don't want right now, it's all good, man. It's all good. It's just telling you what you've been creating. So that's it. It's just telling you the way your subconscious is programmed, the vibration, the relationship you've had around money. That's all it is. And so don't beat yourself up over it, right? When you start right now to take the action as if you were in the energy of it, whether it was starting to read money books once a week or once every other week, you read a new money book, you started doing prosperity affirmations, you picked a goal, you download my free success hypnosis and you start to use it. These are the steps to start to put yourself in a different energy field. So if you feel defeated, it's okay. You have to start somewhere. Bob Marley used to always say, if you don't start somewhere, you are never gonna get nowhere. It's all good. We just got to start. So end with a goal for yourself. Write that goal down. Buy your first money book. Start studying a little bit of it. Start to notice your story around money. Download my free success hypnosis. Buy this Abraham Hicks Money and the Law of Attraction book at Amazon or something like that. 
and I hope that you have an awesome day. This is Jake Ducey with jakeducey.com. Thank you for watching. Press the subscribe button in the corner right there. Be sure that you download my success hypnosis, comment in the step that spoke most to you and where you're coming from in the world. I'm in Maui. I'd love to know where you are coming from. I hope that you have an awesome day. See you next time.